Fear does not exist on this channel, does it? Pain does not exist on this channel, does it? Defeat does not exist on this channel, does it? All right, all right, all right, all right. You get the idea. And it's no secret that YouTube's newest show, Cobra Kai, is an internet sensation. But we're not here to going to review the show today, but rather um, I would like to address the burning question that many fans seem to be asking. What kind of karate is in Cobra Kai? Thirty-four years after the famous crane kick felt around the world, we're treated to a modern update of the Karate Kid saga. It plucks the strings of nostalgia from my generation, and it strikes the chord of inspiration for the young generation. I am part of the legion that stumbled across this under-the-radar hit back in 1984 and decided that I too wanted to learn the way of the fist. Martial arts schools in America weren't as prevalent in the 80s as they are today, and the term karate itself is still often used as a general term for most martial arts. But as I grew up, I asked myself, what kind of style is it? What did Mr. Miyagi teach Daniel? And what kind of karate is in Cobra Kai? Well, there's a lot of discussion about this online. There's a bunch of theories, but um, we're gonna run down some of the more popular opinions and evidence that has been presented to us. So also for the purpose of this discussion, we will be including the original three Karate Kid films and the Cobra Kai series. We will not be basing anything off the next Karate Kid or the 2010 Karate Kid remake. Okay, time to geek out. Um, before we answer the question of what kind of karate is in Cobra Kai, let's point something out. Um, if we're talking about Karate Kid in general, there's actually kind of two different styles to approach. We've got Miyagi style and Johnny style. You know, the Cobra Kai way and the Miyagi-Do way. Um, basically, when they filmed the Karate Kid back in 1983, came out in 1984, uh, all choreography was done by Pat Johnson. And he's one of the early uh, martial arts greats. He was Chuck Norris's top students. He's a grandmaster or really high ranking master of Tank Sudo. He did all the fight choreography in the film as well as he starred as the um, head referee in the tournaments in both first and third movie. What I find is really fun trivia is I love the way he approached choreographing the film. He didn't just get all the actors together and say, Say, okay, you're gonna do this, you're gonna do this. Mr. Johnson actually kind of, he worked on the dynamic as well as the art. So Ralph Macchio and Pat Morita were taught together. They were trained separately from all the other actors. Mr. Johnson worked with them two together so they actually could develop a bond between their training. When it came to the Cobras, Mr. Johnson actually trained the Cobra actors, you know, Tommy, Bobby, Johnny, Jimmy, separately. They were, I mean, they were together in the group, but separately from John Kreese. He taught John Kreese completely separately as their sensei and kind of told him that, you know, he knows more than you, but the Cobras didn't know what he knew. So he wanted that dynamic of, you have your high level teacher, then you've got the Cobra students who don't know what he knows, and you've got a completely different art over here with Miyagi and Daniel that had their own bond and dynamic. So I love the way that Pat Johnson approached this film. Pat Johnson is also known for choreographing multiple films such as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the Mortal Kombat film. Now, if we break this down a little bit, let's look at Miyagi Do Karate. In he doesn't really give much information other than it was taught to him by his father and it came from Okinawa. So, and then Karate Kid 2 even further exemplifies this that Okinawa was the origin of his art. So we know that's a good starting point to begin with. Some sort of Okinawan karate, traditional Japanese. Uh, the bigger hint comes in Karate Kid Part 3 when Miyagi is teaching Daniel Kata. If you ask a lot of martial arts practitioners of the art Goji Ru, they will recognize the Kata They'll all tell you it's performed incorrectly and wrong in the wrong timing. It was modified for cinema, but the moves are very similar. So if you look at Goji Ru origins, Goji Ru is an Okinawan art. Okay, starting to line up a little bit. Then let's look at the name, Mr. Miyagi. Looking at Goji Ru, if you trace it back to its grandmaster, the guy who created it is Chojin Miyagi. So now we can kind of see the picture of where the inspiration of Mr. Miyagi came from. We have um, an Okinawan art with a kata that's performed in the film, albeit altered, and Miyagi named after Chojin Miyagi. So we can conclude pretty confidently that Miyagi Do Karate is Goji Ru, or at least a Hollywood version of it. Johnny's a different story. In the, in the Karate Kid films, we see Daniel's training constantly. It's all about his instruction, all about his level of discipline and his art, but we never really learn anything about Cobra Kai. 
We don't see the classes being taught besides no mercy, strike hard, strike first. That's, that's all we get. Now, in the Cobra Kai TV show, there's a lot more into that as we see Johnny training his students, but even he himself doesn't go any further than to say it's old school karate. So, what does Cobra Kai train in? What kind of martial art is it? Let's look at Johnny's style. In both the movies and the TV show, um, he's very kick oriented. He's got lots of high kicks, lots of fancy kicks, especially in a tournament. That's very prevalent in the Korean arts, Tang Sudo, Taekwondo, they're very kick heavy. If we go into Karate Kid Part 3, there's actually a scene where the, uh, the villain Terry Silver comes to Miyagi and Daniel's training and says he was a classmate and colleague of John Kreese and he's here on behalf of his master from South Korea to give his apologies for John Kreese's action. Okay, so now we have the South Korea aspect, which lines up with Taekwondo or Tang Sudo. Um, let's take this even further. Pat Johnson, as we talked about earlier, choreographed the films. He is a Tang Sudo master. So now you put the pieces together. You've got Terry Silver, who mentions their sensei in South Korea. You've got the kick-based arts and Johnny's techniques. And then you've got the fact that Pat Johnson is a Tang Sudo master. I think we can confidently conclude that uh, Johnny and Cobra Kai train in uh, Tang Sudo, or at least a variant of it. Um, it's really interesting because you see a lot of debate online. Um, a lot of fans theorize that it's Shotokan or Taekwondo. And it's kind of funny because it gets really heated because you've got Shotokan practitioners saying, nope, I trained in Shotokan, this is definitely Shotokan. And people are like, well, no, it's Taekwondo. Oh, no, but Taekwondo came from Shotokan. People will jump in, no, it's Kyokushin Karate. So it's kind of funny to see people talking about it because it's never really stated in the film. But all we can do is take the pieces and kind of put it together. And for fun, what kind of art is it? Because as we grew up, again, karate was just karate. But now we can kind of break levels down. It's kind of a fun thing to examine. Um, the reason we're not going to include the next Karate Kid and the Karate Kid remake in this list is because there's a lot of inconsistencies in the training and the martial arts style. And the fact that the Karate Kid remake is actually Kung Fu. So that could be a whole different discussion on its own. Now, here's a little bit of fun bit of trivia. That crane kick. The crane kick is the most iconic thing. It's been immortalized by this film. And the thing is, it doesn't even exist. It's not a real karate technique. Uh, when they were working on the first film, Pat Johnson uh, was working with the stunt coordinator, um, a famous martial artist known as Daryl Vidal, uh, really high ranking. He's the 10th degree now, I believe, in Chinese Kempo Karate. He helped uh, with the stunts on the film. I think he was some of the stunt doubles as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Mr. Johnson went to Mr. Vidal and said, you know, he was looking for some sort of cool, unique um, technique to end the film with. So Vidal, on the spot, just came up with the crane kick. Just something flashy, something fun, but it's not based on any reality. And even fun fact too is you can see Daryl Vidal in the film. He is the opponent that Johnny defeats right before fighting Daniel. And he's also Miyagi's stunt double on the beach scene on the tree stump doing the crane kick where we see it for the first time. 